Hi, this is COMP 1010 at the University of Manitoba. I'm Dr. Celine Latulip, and today I'm going to be talking to you about difficult loops. So what if you had to draw a loop that corresponded to this flowchart over here on the right? So just to refresh your memory about how flowcharts work, the square boxes represent program statements, maybe blocks of code. The diamonds are conditions where we need to make a decision. And the arrows, especially arrows that loop around like this, of course, represent repetition. So we want to do the statements in A, then we need to test B. If B is true, then we want to do the statements in C and the statements in A, and then test B again. If B is false, we want to exit out and not do the statements in C. So this is a little bit more complicated than the standard loop that we've been talking about. Um, and so there's a number of different ways that you could do it. Does this loop have to be done once? That's one of the questions that we ask when we're choosing loops. And it's kind of a half and half. A needs to be done at least once, but C may not need to be done at all if the condition B is not true. So how do you write this in code? So there's a bunch of different ways and we're going to look through them. So the first way that we might do this is like this. So we take the statements that are represented by block A and we execute those. And then we test condition B. If it's true, then we execute condition the statement C, we execute statement A, and then we will go back up to the top of the while loop and test condition B again. So this will actually achieve what we're um, depicting here in this flow chart, but this is not a great way to do this because we're actually doing A twice. So what's a different way to do it? Well, here we could use the do while loop. This is the thing that we want to use typically when we want to make sure that stuff has to be done at least once. And so we can do a do while loop. We can do A, this statement or block of statements that's represented here. And then we have to then test condition B. And if B is true, we do C. Because we have to have this test here because we're not necessarily sure we have to do C. We definitely have to do A, but we don't necessarily have to do C once. So we'll do the if B, and then if B is true, we do C. And otherwise, we're going to loop back up, um, but we'll test B down here. So this is maybe a little bit better. We don't have A repeating, but now we're actually testing the B condition twice. Um, if A was a big block of code, then this would be an efficiency gain. If B is a difficult uh, test to compute, then maybe it's not. Um, and this could also lead to bugs just if C is actually changing B. We've got two tests in here. That could end up being problematic. So a third way to approach this problem is to actually create a Boolean variable. And that's to capture the um, result of our test B. So when we do it this way, what we do is we first of all, we create a Boolean variable. We're going to call it go and we set it to true. And we say while go is true. And because we've set this to true, this will cause this to be executed at least once. So we're going to def definitely do A. And then we assign go to the result of evaluating the expression B. So if B is true, go will be true. And then we have the same type of thing. If go, then we do C. And if B is not true, then C will not be executed. And then we're going to come back up to the top of the while loop and we're going to test go again. Um, and so this is pretty good because we're not actually doing the, um, the B expression evaluation. All we're doing is looking at the Boolean variable to see whether or not it's true. We're not doing a whole bunch of statements over and over again. So this is a reasonably efficient way to go about doing this. So I want to introduce you to two other small features that you can use when you're doing looping that can occasionally be useful, especially when you've got complicated things like the flowcharts we've just seen. So the first is the break statement. A break statement has the effect of immediately terminating the loop it's in. So let's look at, and, and we'll look at an example in a second. Um, if you've got nested loops, the break statement only ter terminates the innermost one that it's in. It won't also terminate the outer loop. And the continue statement, which 
terminates the current iteration of the loop it's in. So what that means is instead of finishing the rest of the code block, it skips it and then it goes back up to the top of that and we do the test uh, condition again. So let's look at examples of both of these. And I just want to note that this is not material that we're going to test you on in Comp 1010, but it's material that could be useful for you. So here's an example of a break statement. So we have a for loop, we're iterating over i from 0 to 10, and um, in this we have a test that says if i is equal equal to 4, then break. And then we've also got a print line statement. So what this is going to do is produce output that looks like this. So i is 0, we come in, i doesn't equal 4, we skip this, and we print out i, so we print out 0. And then we get back up here, i is now 1, we come in here, I'd, 1 doesn't equal 4, we print out 1, etc. So we're going to do all of this up until we get to the point where i equals 4. And at the point that i equals 4, we come in here and we have a break statement and we completely jump out of this loop. We're not going to test it again. We're not going to iterate anymore. We're not going to see if 4 is less than 10. Once we have a break statement, this loop is completely finished and we will do whatever code comes after that. So in this case, the break statement actually also comes before the print line statement. So we never even print out the value of 4. Okay. And here's an example of using continue. So again, we have a for loop. We're iterating over i from 0 up to and including 5. And we have an if i is equal equal to 3, then we do a continue. So let's, and we're also again printing out the value of i in each iteration of this for loop. So let's look at what the output looks like. So when i is 0, we print 0. When i is 1, we print 1. When i is 2, we print 2. When i is 3, this evaluates to true. We hit a continue statement. That causes us to skip everything else that's inside this loop and go back up to the top and continue iterating. And so what you see is that we do not print out the value 3, and i becomes 4, and then we print out 4, i becomes 5, we print out 5, and then our loop is finished. So continue skips the rest of whatever's in the loop and goes back to the top break completely ends the loop. And continue and break can also work with while loops, not just for loops. So now if we look back at our difficult loop problem, now we have another way to deal with this. So we can use break. And so in this case, what we're going to do is um, while true, and then we do the statements A, and then if b is false, or if not b, then we break out of the loop. And if otherwise, we continue through here and we complete the statements that are c. And so this is actually the cleanest way to do this because we're able to jump out of here. All right, so that is it for looking at sort of more complicated loops and learning about break and continue. Thanks for watching.